Coming up on this week's All About Hennessy show, improvements around town, Hennessy firefighters learn about storms, what it really takes to put on a basketball game, and much, much more on this episode of the All About Hennessy show. This show made possible in part by Northcutt Toyota. Let Northcutt be your shortcut to a great deal. And Roosters, legendary chicken and family fun. Roostersok.com. Welcome to this week's edition of the All About Hennessy Show. Ah, I need to make like ah noises, like ah. Ah, okay, he's a little slow, but that's okay. <laughs> Today's guest is Tyson Copeland with Legacy Lawn and Pest Control Solutions. No control, but we do control. Okay, you control the pests. Correct, correct, and, and weeds. That too. We're gonna to talk about that here in a little bit. But first, uh, or right after this, Dr. Woods will be here with a school update, and he has some really important news about, um, well, you just have to wait and let him tell you about it. Um, but first, have you noticed I, I notice it because I'm out all the time. And well, you are too. You're around town like all the time. That the town is really being proactive with fixing things, little things. And the average person might not notice it. Like, just here, watch this. Small, steady improvements. The town of Hennessy is making a notable difference with improvements around town, like the drainage project on the east side of town and the new sidewalk in the 100 block of West Oklahoma Street. Both sides of the first block of sidewalks were broken bricks, holes, and mud. At a recent trustees meeting, the board voted to repair the north side sidewalk along the new Wellness Mercantile Building. There was discussion about doing the south side in the near future. Small, steady improvements that make big differences in our small town. Thanks, Renee. Now, I know there's several more things that are coming because we go to the city council meetings all the time and they've always got something stirring. So there's... Uh quite a few more little projects like that on the works that are coming, so stay tuned for those. Um, I don't know if you know this, but a few years ago, well, for like tw almost 20 years, I was a professional storm chaser. And what designates you from professional and non-professional is somebody paid me to do it. And it wasn't <laughs> very much. I usually didn't pay for the gas. Um, but I worked for CNN, the Weather Channel, ABC News, Channel 5, and my job was to get like right up under a storm and tell them what I saw. And we do it on the telephone because we didn't have the video thing and all that kind of stuff back, back in the day. But, um, but I understand you're a firefighter. Yes, How sir. How long have you been a firefighter? Nine and a half years. Holy mackerel. Boy, you got almost ready for the gold watch. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what happened last week is the Hennessy Fire Department stepped up and started taking storm spotter classes. And uh, they're going to, well, let's... Let's just watch. Ivan Cabral filed the story. Up to now, when spring severe storms threatened the Hennessy area, we were kind of at the mercy of the Oklahoma City television stations. That really didn't do a great job of looking out for us. Things will be different this storm season, since the Hennessy volunteer firefighters are taking an active role in storm spotting. Last week, the Hennessy volunteer firefighters attended a National Weather Service storm spotter training webinar to prepare them for the upcoming storm season. 12 firefighters, along with Hennessy's police chief, attended the online class. The class outlined the basics of thunderstorm development, fundamentals of storm structure, identifying potential severe weather features, information to report, how to report information, as well as basic severe weather safety. The firefighters will be attending an advanced weather class on March 30th. This will help make Hennessy better weather aware during severe weather season. Thanks, Ivan. So are you ready to go like get under the tornadoes and stuff? If I have to, yeah. Yeah. It's uh Well, you know, the trick is intense. the trick is don't use your vehicle. My my problem <laughs> yes, my helps. problem always was that, that I owned my car and you know, hail and windshield damage and things like that came out of my pocket where the other guys like the the Channel 5 guys and others that didn't own their car, they didn't care. They were fearless. 
So send it to the body shop, get me a new truck. But yeah, I, <laughs> I wasn't that brave. When we come back, Dr. Wiz will be here with his update and some really important news. But first, this. This show made possible in part by Taggart's Garden Center. Get ready for spring, south of Hennessy on Highway 81. So, a lot going on at the school. Absolutely. Um, so now, do I have to do my I'm ready Roy line all well, over? Well, in all we, fairness, we started this and had to start over again because uh, I messed just, up. So, it yes. Probably wouldn't so, work are you well. ready? I'm ready, Roy. It course, was, I was born that, ready. Born ready? That's the correct line. Yeah. Yes. No. Ready, yeah. Roy. Are you ready, and Roy? You, I was born ready. That would be, that would be, uh, that oh. would be the guy. Uh, yes. Uh, Burt Russell. Burt Bert, 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 Bert Russell. Burt Reynolds. <laughs> Bert Re I get Burt Russell okay. and Burt Reynolds mixed up all the time. It's from the movie so. Smoking the Bandit. One of the Shelly best Fields car movies Ms. known to man, except same time. unless old people like it. So. Anyway. Yeah. So. Big Enos, little Today. Um, Snowman. <laughs> we had a. Uh, college signing today yeah and a uh, Caden Rapp yeah. signed with McPherson College for baseball very nice that was pretty cool yeah, we absolutely haven't, uh, but that kind of makes it all worthwhile you know when you see those yeah. see so kids succeed at that level something they put a lot of happen. time and effort into I was blessed enough to uh, I had a little boy that he went to Southwest Christian and got to play and it was fun to go watch him play after they got out of school speaking of sports have you ever thought I mean, well, your office is in the building. Have you ever thought what it really takes to put on a basketball game? Well, I haven't. Could you help me understand? I'm going to show you. Fantastic. Libby Seeger has this story. We've all been to a basketball game, but have you ever thought about what it takes to produce a game? And then... All last week and this week, there has been a steady convoy of buses rolling in and out of Hennessy with the OSSAA basketball playoff. That's three or four games a day for about 10 days. So let's see what really goes into making this happen. Of course, you need players and coaches, but what about the rest? Well, there are ticket sales, concession operations, extra food prep for big events, a scorekeeper, the announcement guy, the graphics operator, the stats keeper, some random person. There's even a buzzer and a clock guy. And don't forget the Eagle's Nest student section and referees. Of course, there are cheerleaders and the cheerleader coach, the palm squad, and don't forget the fans and the radio announcer guy, the band and the video crew. And then there is the school athletic trainer that keeps everyone healthy. Now, during big OSSAA events, the arena is cleared after every game and the cleaning crew comes in and sanitizes everything before the next game. So the next time you visit the Eagle Event Center, look around and think about what all took place to make this a fun night. I'm Libby Seeger. Back to you, Jack. Thanks, Libby. I got tired just thinking about all it took to put on a ball game. It's daunting. It's, it's a lot. It's I really didn't. Test. I guess when, until I started doing that package, I didn't realize there was quite so much to it. We, it's a little bit self-inflicted because we do go way above and beyond in, in the things that uh, Todd Cameron does, the things that um, Ray Anna Fuchsa does, uh, the, the folks that, that are cleaning. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we, we go a little bit above and beyond, and I think that's, that makes it a little bit more. But there is a, there's a base level of stuff that everybody has to do to it's, get ready. It's pretty cool. And, and everybody just does it. It doesn't seem to be like this, you know. Yeah, here's your checklist. Yeah, it's just everybody so. just sort of gets in there and makes it happen. It's pretty yeah. cool. Uh, early bird sign up. What is early bird sign up? That's a, a pre-K uh, zero to three level uh, curriculum and, and um, program for parents and kids getting ready to come into the, the pre-kindergarten program. And it just lets the parents know what the expectations are for their kids and what they should know and what they should be able to do when they come into the program. Mm -hmm. And plus it lets us kind of work with the parents preemptively to uh, get them prepared to help support us through their kiddos as they come into the the, the pre-kindergarten program. I believe everyone was notified with an email or a text. It's either today or yesterday that went out. So pay attention to your emails. Miss Mac. Miss Mac uh, that. sent that out. Yes. Yeah. Did you and, ever notice that it's Stacy Mac 
and her her email is S M A C K. So we're all talking smack. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the no, new I thing. Didn't get that's that. the new thing to do at school is to talk. I'm still smack. stuck on her her previous name, so yeah. it's like, oh well. She answers to both. Yeah. Um, She'll return an email either way. Yes. And then we have a big basketball game Friday night. In yeah, Enid. boys are uh, in the um, uh, region uh, area uh, tournament. Yes. So they win and they're in the state tournament. One win and it's in the state tournament. Oh, it's that fast. Yeah, they're they, they're on the winner's side of the bracket. Well, I was looking for the the chart and I right. couldn't find where we were on it. I yeah, guess no, maybe you, they haven't you, updated it yet or what. But. So you you win, you go on to the state tournament, and that's the winner's side of the bracket. You lose, you have to go one more game, and if we win that second game, you go into the state tournament on the loser side of the bracket. Wow. So. Okay. It's moving faster than I thought. Yeah. We're farther yeah. along than I thought yeah. then, I guess. Yeah, okay. Very, very Two cool. weeks from state tournament. Okay. What do you got cooking? Uh, teachers were able to go receive uh, the COVID vaccines on Saturday. We had several that got their first shot. Second shot is March 27th, I believe. Was that done at the school? Uh, that was done in Enid at the um, Oak Park uh, Mall. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they had a little area set up, and it was very efficiently ran. And you went in, and they said, kind of like, we got an opening here. And they go sit down, roll your sleeve, give you a shot, make you set for 15 minutes, and make sure nothing reacts inappropriately and so uh, wow. i can't tell you how many of the staff did but a, but a, a, a large number of people that we recognized were there getting the uh, the vaccines uh, and like i said the second shot is um the the second i don't know if it's called a booster or the how far apart are dose. they uh it would be about three uh, the first one was saturday and then the 27th so three, three weeks, weeks three to four weeks hmm. yeah okay and there's a window in there that you have to, to hit to get the uh you know, get the first shot and then the second shot within a time frame. Right. Good. Um, so uh, the um, cleanup is ongoing. We had a rep for the for the busted water pipes at the school uh, two weeks ago, or well, I guess just a week we ago. We were talking about that yeah. at the board meeting just the, this afternoon, and it, we were. I mean, because when you called me, it was like we're out for a month. Yeah, and it, it came together so fast yep. by hiring the pros and getting the right adjusters in there and things like that. Yeah, I didn't think people would be able to get because the the scope of of the number of folks it, it was kind of interesting. We were one of the few that were actually on television. That everyone else was talked about, but we actually had people in the building. And um, the just the the scope of the the damage of that storm was border to border mm -hmm. in, in places that had never had frozen water pipes before, and so. Uh, we were real concerned about being able to get people in. Well, we've, we've been able to address that. The, the problem we're having now is that you're two weeks out, and the the stuff that was on the floor sitting in the water now has been moved. There was a bunch of stuff that I know in Cindy's room was under the counter, and the back, the counters from the back have to be removed and replaced. And so all the stuff that was in that now is up on a shelf. instead of. And so <laughs> I, I, they're going to have to bring in a set of specialists, and we're going to have to kind of go through it. But they're, the process we're in right now is identifying what has to be replaced and then getting that started. But, so the plan is is just to finish out the year, and then over the right. summer you can Ms. tear, tear yeah. up the place? Ms. Gwynn and, and Ms. Um, uh, Parrish are moved. They've moved rooms. Their rooms won't be ready till the yeah. summer. Those are the ones. The whole ceiling came right. Out. That, the, and a the furnace. One end. of the furnaces. One got furnace. Wrecked. I don't. I don't ever hear if both furnaces had to be replaced. You know, like right now we're going through and we're going to, have to replace a bunch of lights and. Mm -hmm. So, um, that is going along really well, though. The, the teachers are being able to teach. We're having class full, 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 full uh, speed ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's going well. Um, one of the things that we've talked about in the past, and so we kind of made three promises on the dome. Uh, the first was we wanted community uh, access, and, and there's, I think, 45. Jalissa, I just saw, was up at school. Mm -hmm. uh, she's our intern that runs the walking track yep. and the, the dome of an evening. Um, we've got a lot of folks using that. We've got a lot of folks that have uh, come up with ideas of how they could use the, the facility, the event center, in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. and, and so we, the other one was uh, that we were going to keep our millage down. That's happening. We're actually to the point where we may sell off a full uh, one bond sale early, which really? could have a huge impact uh, for the amount of ad valorem that we have to collect from the community. Mm -hmm. And the third was we felt this could be an economic impact engine with the, the dome and, and the, what we could do in it. And we are having a 3A regional final at Hennessy this week, the same time our boys are in the 2A area, I said regional, but 2A, area, 3A area, our boys are in the 2A area tournament, 
uh, in Enid. Mm -hmm. So we've we've got teams. I think there's 11 different teams going to be coming into Hennessy. Oh, really? Yeah. So what we had it's last 11 what, different teams. What we had last week was just a little sample. Of so that. it's district is first, and that's smaller. Yep. Then the regionals gets bigger. And mm -hmm. I can't remember. I think we had 12 different teams in the regional, mm -hmm. and now in the area we're going to have 11 different teams. For, and I should say probably 11 different communities represented by teams. Yeah. And so uh, I heard a story, I don't know if in the accuracy, but that uh, Cordell stopped and got everybody out and ate at Brewster's and, you know, packed the place. And again, I don't know how many times yeah, that might have happened. Those buses hold, what, 50 people? Right. And they had two buses. So um, this weekend, when we have the 3A regional or area here, Every dollar spent is out-of-town money being brought into Hennessy, whether they stop and get gas, whether they spend a dollar at the concession. I'm sorry, I, I have to have breaking. We have a, where's the, play, do the breaking news <laughs> Sonic Ice is here. Oh, I yeah. said, oh I, Sonic yeah. Style Ice. We don't have Sonic's actual ice. Right. We, the Sonic Style Ice uh, is, is actually here. So we call it the rabbit poop ice. It's like little round okay. nuggets of ice. Yeah. If you ever get a drink at Sonic, you'll know what he's talking about. So they have a, yeah. a Sonic so, ice maker. Sonic style ice, ice maker. maker. At, and it is producing ice mm -hmm. right now. So um, you can have, uh, which I would still recommend go to Sonic for a ice and a burger. But, but while you're at the while, dome. While you're at the dome, go to the concession and, and we have the Sonic ice. And it is, I went in, I could not find anything to, to carry it in. I was going to bring some with me, but I didn't. <laughs> Put I didn't it in your pocket? I did, I did not. There's a puddle not, on the no, floor, but, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you for pointing that out. So, um, but, but again, back to the whole economic input. That, that people come in, they, they eat in the, the, the restaurants, they buy gas at the gas station, uh, they're involved in the community in ways that we would probably never have anybody from those communities come in here. Mm -hmm. And but because we have the facility that we have, and so far I, I haven't heard a lot about it. But the pe other people have told me that the the, the dome is provide is performing as expected, and it is uh, getting rave reviews by the folks. Well, the thing are about involved. the thing about convention of visitors, it falls under that category. When when new people come into town that don't live here, and leave some money behind while they're here, that's new money. Because in, in our little economy, we kind of just keep trading money. Right. When you bring people from outside in, that's brand new money that's injected into the community. And Well, uh, <clears throat> and the other thing it does for us is that when, when you come to the Dome and you see, and especially some of the cool stuff they've got going on on the, the big screens, and I think they've even got some really cool videos coming up that Ray Ann put together. Um, the impression that other communities have of Hennessy is formed basically by what restaurants they where they get gas, but where they're what they do at the school, mm -hmm. and so the dome does a really good job of uh, promoting the, the the district and the community. All right. So itself. when are these games so the businesses can be open? Uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I think Thursday, Friday they start earlier, but you know as you we eliminate teams, you have to have less times. And I think Friday or, uh, Saturday there's probably just two games, mm -hmm. uh, but but starting on Thursday and uh, Friday I believe it starts at like one thirty and. The last game's like <clears throat> at 8 or something yeah, like that? Yeah, it's been about 8 o'clock. Okay. And we're working to, to where we can get out in the community and, and um, working with other unnamed people to try to do things to where we promote the businesses through the, the media displays that we have at school mm -hmm. to where they know that, that um, I mean, I, I, I love the 81 uh, cheeseburger with the, the grilled onions mm -hmm. and the string, the curly fries, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the um, Western burger at Eat It Up, like the, the the you know you just go on and on and on uh, of the, the different places people could eat. We've got the chains, we got all those things available, and so again. It's, when we're working on some things, it's too late this year, but we're working on some things for other events like this where we can reach out ahead of time and let right. those communities know here's what we got. Come here, eat, buy gas, yeah. spend the night, and um, yeah, yeah. So very nice, very very cool. All right. Last thing I have is the and this because this is being seen Thursday, right? Yes, okay, Thursday so, evening. So Wednesday there was a special board meeting. This is actually less than an hour ago. This right. happened. Right. Oh, new center. Uh, oh, doo -doo 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 -doo. breaking so, news. Yeah, this is really breaking news. Yes. Okay. Well, so was the Sonic Eyes. I don't, um, I don't yeah. appreciate you downplaying that. <laughs> the um, new superintendent 
that will start in uh, tw the 21-22 school year mm -hmm. uh, was named tonight, and it is uh, Jason Sternberger from, um, he's currently residing and working in Kingfisher. Mm -hmm. So that was announced tonight. And Him and his wife, Jackie, were here. Nice, nice folks, yeah. and we're looking yep. forward to working with them. And so I coached girls basketball in Visa, at Visai several years back when Jackie Snodgrass was uh, Jackie um, – uh, she was Jackie Snodgrass, now she's Jackie Sternberger, but she was Jackie Snodgrass then. Oh, and she was I a heck of that. a player. Yeah. Heck of a well, player. Well, she's really tall. Yes. Yes. Athletic. Okay. Um, and she's a coach yeah. now, I think. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure. I did not keep uh, up with her career after the, the one scrimmage we had when I was, but we drove to Ames. Well, they still have in this, <laughs> they're still in school. And um, uh, so I, I uh, had previous uh, experience with the. Well, that's cool. I didn't realize that. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Very I good. They beat us real bad. But I, mean, I wouldn't tell anyone that. So, <laughs> also, I apologize. I, He's all sunburned. Well. He was out yeah. playing in the water well drilling today. I've got a, a larger today. forehead anyway, so it's really <laughs> easy for the sun and the wind to uh, just smack into it and make it red. So, Got to get your hat. Where's your hat? Well, they, they told me. See, I was on my way to a meeting in Oklahoma City, and they called and said, hey, we had a schedule change. Do you want to drill your water well today? Because we, we're, we bought some land out other side of uh, east of Wacoma. So mm -hmm. I said, I'm not going to give up an opportunity to get the water well They're drilled. They're hard to get with, their guys. Yeah. yeah. And Brent Lang's the guy that did it, and he's an outstanding uh, water well guy. And so there was no way I was going to put that off. So we, I flipped around and went back, and we drilled the water well today, and, and I got sunburned. Uh, doing very cool. It. So first sunburn of the new, new year. Very, very cool. So I think that's all I got. Good. All right, more details to come on the new superintendent. We just posted something moments ago. This will be a day old by the time you hear this uh, with some details, and we'll continue to update you on them and when they will be here. And uh, we're still got, we have you until the 1st of June. Is that how that works? Oh, I wouldn't wait till then if you have something you need to ask me. <laughs> don't, don't, don't think I'll go in on the second and ask that question. But. We may surprise you. We'll have a, yeah. a cardboard cutout of, of, yeah. of Mike here next time. Most but. people can't tell the difference. That's true. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, 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 you know, I'm on contract till the last of uh, June, 1st of June. Well, regardless, we'll have you here for a send-off yes. one way or the oh, other. Oh, I don't know about a send-off. Yeah. We'll have donuts or something. Fantastic. All right. Thanks, Mike. Right, don't thanks go away. We'll be right back with Tyson Copeland. And uh, stay tuned. The show made possible in part by Jack Choate, Oklahoma Farm Bureau Insurance. Auto, home, life, annuities, business, farm, and ranch. And we're back. So, how did you get into the legacy thing? What What's the backstory on this? I guess Lee, the Crosswhite started this? Leon started it many years ago. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, Leon told me 32, he was 32 years old when he started it, and I was 32. Really? or I was 31 when I was doing it. So wow. when I was talking to him about purchasing it from him. Mm -hmm. So we were pretty close to the same age. So that was pretty cool and unique. Um, so that was awesome. Um, as far as getting into it goes is I had a guy tell me, he knew I wanted to do something on my own. I was doing oil field chemical mm -hmm. and he knew about this and said I needed to go talk to him. And I worked there back in high school one summer doing the fertilizer. Oh, you actually, so you actually worked for Leon? Yes. Oh, no yes. kidding. Oh, that's cool. Yes. So you're I kind, was 15. Kind, oh, okay. Yeah, I got to ride so with somebody kind, and spray kind fertilizer. Of new. Yeah. yeah, okay. So I kind, I never got to spray back then, mm -hmm. um, but I did get to fertilize. Um, I only got to fertilize Okarchi and Kingfisher, mm -hmm. um, but I did get to do it, and I was still working at Sonic at that time, too. So we would get off work, and then so we'd I go work everything. at Sonic. Yeah. So I worked a lot when I was younger. Good. And so... And um, you're originally from Hennessy. Yes, and all you, my life. And you met your wife at, in school? Yes, yes. We were Very both cool. from Hennessy. We graduated here, mm -hmm. and we got two kids in school, and one will be in school um, soon. Total of three. Three total. It's math yeah. is hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> the new math is I'm trying to do the kids' homework. I can't do it. Thanks, thanks, babe. So, all right, so you, you, got, you have this company. Now, I was there a couple months ago, and we took photos of all your stuff, and you have an enormous amount of equipment. There's a lot, um, and I found out firsthand this winter, we went and purchased a truck out of Florida. Mm -hmm. I drove it back, and we had to completely redo it. Most people have seen it now here in town. Um, it's pretty, it's sharp, and it does a great job, mm -hmm. but it takes a lot. You've significantly grown the company in the, how long have you owned it now? Nine? Uh, uh, we took over September 1st, 2017, Okay, is when we took over. Um, 
and we have done a great job yard wise um adding more customers to it and We've what's added, what's your coverage area how far out do you go from Hennessy? so we go south to okarchi mm -hmm. and then north we go all the way to north enid mm -hmm. and then east we go to perry um we got covington now added and then lahoma now got added and then i do okeen so mackerel. we got a distance that we cover <laughs> so wow yes. okay i didn't realize i you know like everybody in Hennessy, you think you're from Hennessy, that's all you know, but you really get out there. We, yeah, you, we cover a lot of ground. Mm -hmm. We do. And what's, what's, what's your core business? Is spraying? Yard spraying, yes. Yard spraying we, we for weeds. Wise, yes. and um, we do, that's of course the majority of it, fertilizer as well. Um, mm -hmm. That kind of goes hand in hand. Um, and we're in a real critical time right now. This is the it er, is. early, 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 almost spring. Correct. So late winter, early spring is what you call it. So many companies do things different. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's companies that do 11 sprays a year. There's companies that only do three or four. Mm -hmm. um, we're one of those that do it. I mean, we can do a wide range. We do specialty treatments as well. Um, but everybody does it a little different. Mm -hmm. um, there's some people that put two applications down by the time we put one down. Mm -hmm. um, but everybody's got their own thing that works for them. And as long as they're doing it and it's working for them good. well a lot awesome. of it has to do of of the area like you know exactly what area you're in yes. because you know here something might be drier than over there but yes let's say um perry for example has a completely different issue than um, a problem we have in hennessy mm -hmm. um so we have to change products when we get over there because of a certain weed that mm. don't die with our chemical that we use around here so what about sandburrs oh <sighs> sandburrs are bad news that is uh, hard to get rid of they are um a lot of people ask me about msma um and i'm sure there's people that are going to say they use it which mm -hmm. is illegal for somebody like me to use mm -hmm. um and i hope you're licensed yes because yep. we are licensed and, and um it's got stuff in it that they want to keep away from people and um animals mm -hmm. um farmers use it a lot and it's no good for cattle it's mm. bad news for them it's cheap though so that's mm -hmm. why they use it and it works but it's just it's bad. Yeah. It's bad. So we can't use it. If I get tested, I'm going to have a nasty fine, and it's just not worth it. Um, but there's other products out there that we can use that do an excellent job. Um, it just, it, but it's, it's not it one of those time. instant things. Sambers take, take a couple of years to really get them under control. Oh, yeah, yeah. definitely. So they'll sit down there forever and, and hang out. Mm -hmm. um, and so you've got to, once you think you've got it, you've got to stay on top of it. If not, they're right back. Yep. Um, but it is, it, it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, it just, you can't spray it one time and hope and it's gone because they're coming. Now, when you're spraying, you use this green dye stuff. I got to tell you a story. Okay. So you can't see it right now, but we're on a green screen. Okay. So I called Tyson the other night and I says, when you come, don't wear anything green. He says, think about it. I spray with a green <laughs> chemical. I'm going to glow in the dark. Uh. So his hands have a little tint to them, but I don't think we can see through uh. them. But. Anyway, so uh, he got it all washed off, so it's, we're, we're okay. It but. sticks with you pretty well. It does come yeah. off in the shower, but it will stay. Well, what's the point of the green stuff? It's really to show you where you've been Correct. to get proper coverage. So or? one of the things I, I definitely want to touch this is a lot of people call us and say they didn't think we hit it good enough because it's not that dark green. Um, it is literally just so we can see it. The grass is brown, so it does. It takes very little right now for us to see it. Dye is very expensive if you've ever bought it. Mm -hmm. And so... If I've we heard, can put just a little bit just, in, just do what you can to, to exactly. see exactly. Yeah. So if we can put just a little in, that's fine. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. That's all we need, just so we don't overlap and put too much down, or so we don't miss a spot. And so, if you really want the grass green, over overseed with rye. <laughs> Otherwise, the green stuff's just to show them where he, yes. where he was. Now yeah. there are companies out there that what they do called yard painting. Um, but oh, from really? what I hear is it's very expensive. It is the, such the, a thing. The equipment is expensive to do, <laughs> but you can literally go and paint your yard green. Um, that is not what we're here to do. Mm -hmm. We are to um, get your pre-emergent down, get your broadleaf killers down, and do it as cheap as we can right, to so save you guys what money. What does pre-emergent kill? Pre-emergent doesn't kill anything. Okay. Pre-emergent stops things from germinating, st trying to stop them from popping up. So like sandburrs, for example. <clears throat> There's a, there's a product out there they quit making. Luckily, I have quite a bit of it still left. <laughs> uh, but it's supposed to stop germination of sandburrs. Now, it won't stop them completely just because of the sandburr life cycle and how they sit down there. But mm -hmm. pre-emergent is supposed to stop. So like right now, a big one people want, one for sandburrs, but another one is crabgrass. Yeah. So you get that pre-emergent down just to try to stop the crabgrass from even coming so you don't have to have a crabgrass. Clone. I noticed that I hadn't sprayed in a while, but my neighbor did. 
and he doesn't mow his grass until like the end of May because he's killed all the weeds and the Bermuda doesn't really get going. I've already mowed four times. And so it's like <laughs> you, you pay him or you put gas in the lawnmower. It's like... So spraying, that's, that's the biggest way to sell it is it stops you from having to mow. So if it's June, not really June, but July and August when it's 100 degrees and we're not mm -hmm. really getting much rain. Last year we did in July, but if you're not getting much rain and you're not watering, you don't have to mow. Yep. But if you have weeds, now you have to mow. And well, now it's 100 weeds degrees. Weeds are green, wants to but mow yeah. When it's 100 degrees out. Yep. So getting your yard sprayed, not only does it look good, it saves you from having to mow near as much. Mm -hmm. So there's a benefit to it. All right, cool. Good deal. And you have a new piece of equipment. We do. We haven't got it at our shop yet. I have a picture of it. Put the picture up. But okay. we do have it. Um, it's something I'm excited about. Um, we will get it going here springtime. We need to let the grass come, come in first. And what's it called? Um, it is an aerator. It will be a core aeration, um, something that a lot of my customers do need. Um, not that many people provide it around here. Um, so we took it upon ourselves to do it, and it will help us fill in those rainy days or windy days so, so we can go out the there and The soil, do the point of it is, I guess, the soil compacts, and then water just, like, runs off. Correct. So if you've got, like, water puddles building up, it can't soak in, um, core aeration will pull that out and it'll allow that water to, to breathe. And it's gonna allow your grass to breathe. It's gonna allow that water to soak in Fertilizer better. can get where your it needs to Your fertilizer's gonna work a lot better if you do an aeration job on it. Mm -hmm. um, they recommend doing it once a year. Um, if you're real in a real compact area, um, you might need to do it twice a year, mm -hmm. um, but once a year is better How than none. How big of a plug does it pull out? How four to six inches is, I mean, I can adjust it, okay. but four to six inches is typically. Um, but it won't kill mold and gophers. No. <laughs> I've, Ivan asked that. Ivan's behind the yeah. camera and he says, one I'll get you taken care of. Will it kill the gophers? And yeah, Sorry, Ivan. No, but I will get you taken <laughs> care of. <laughs> need longer stakes for the, for the, <laughs> the gophers. So it is something we're, we are excited about. We will have it on our hands very soon. As soon as we can get a non-windy uh, day or a rainy day to go pick it up, it's there um, for our use. So we'll have it. Um, so give what, us a call. when do you? When would you start using that? Um, you want your grass to start growing. Um, right now, it would kind of be pointless because I mean, yes, you would still get some air and stuff. It's gonna help, but it's gonna be better if you can do it um, mm -hmm. springtime when your grass is greening up, or in the fall. Um, mm -hmm. That's kind of a preference deal. Some people say it works better in the spring. Some people say it's better in the fall. Mm -hmm. It's Pick your poison. Sure. Okay. Very cool. Anything else exciting going on we need to talk about? or? Um, we do have pest control still. I, I do want to bring about, that up. I have a lot of people. Forget about the bugs. Yeah. I have yes. a lot of people talk to me about it. Um, they didn't know that we do in-house roach control, bed bugs, um, fleas and ticks inside your house. Do you spray like outside around the house? We do outside and inside. Mm -hmm. um, we won't do inside every time um, unless it's needed. Mm -hmm. um, just for your general spiders and stuff like that. But we do have bait stations for mice, stuff like that as well, um, that we handle. Um, you so trap skunks? No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't want no part of that. Don't call me on that, please. All right. Very cool. Um, anything else we need to go over or uh, highlight? I think um, I will put Tyson's information in the description of this video. You can give him a call. He can get an estimate or come out and check out what you're needing and and everything's custom too right i mean you're not just like this big rubber stamp so uh, for the most part yes um, we do have our typical programs that we do you know your silver program gold program stuff like that that mm -hmm. we do um, and that was we inherited that from the cross white days uh, but there's there's much more that we've added to it um, iron treatments as well of course aeration we start doing soil samples so we can figure out if we need to put some lime down or some calcium down whatever you need but we do, if you have a big get together, we can put an iron treatment down before, get that yard super green for you, make it look pretty and pressure yeah, people that are coming like by. Grass steroids. Yes, it is, it is. <laughs> so um, there's there's many things that we can do. We do tree spraying for webworms and bagworms, mm -hmm. um, fleas and ticks in your yard we handle. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's plenty. Well, there's more to the spring than I thought. I thought it was pretty much just spraying for spiders and stuff in the house. Yeah, no, there's, there's all, all together. I mean, as far as, because like moles, for example, for <clears throat> Ivan, I mean, that's that could be grub worms. Um, grub worms we can treat with a pesticide in your yard to take care of the grubs, which mm -hmm. gets rid of the moles. Yep. There we go. We got a win-win. So. Very, very cool. All right. Before we take off, um, if you're watching this on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Because the benefit of that is, is that when you, uh, when we post a new version of this, you'll get a notification. Where Facebook isn't quite as good about doing that. And then be sure, uh, remember that this is also a podcast, so you can get this on any of your podcast apps. 
uh, Google, iTunes, Spotify. Am I missing any? Some of the others? Caught Ivan off guard. He's, he's <laughs> taking a nap back there. Um, but you can get it anywhere you get your podcast from. So that's it. Thank you, Tyson. Thanks for having me. All right. See you next week.